Hello everyone, welcome to FISC Financial Studies Classes. This session is about CFLL1 reading number 48, LOS 2 and 3. This is the first part of this LOS because this is a very big LOS. So we are going to study this LOS in two video sessions. So in the first part, we will study about forward commitments and contingent claims and what is the difference between them. So the forward commitments are a kind of deal in which two parties agree to do a transaction at a later date on a pre agreed upon price. So this is called forward commitments. A contingent claim is also similar where two parties make a deal today for a transaction which is going to take place in the future. However, the difference is that in a contingent claim, one of the party has a right and other party has an obligation to obey the deal whereas in the forward commitment both party has the obligation now since there is no right in forward commitments nobody pays premium to each other whereas in contingent claim one party which has the right pays premium to the party which is having the obligation now in forward commitment the upside is uh, give a return off because they are protecting the downside of the both the parties whereas in the contingent claims the downside is protected without impacting the upside and to protect the downside we are paying the premium now the examples of forward commitments are forwards futures swaps etc whereas for contingent claims the examples are all options and put options etc so we will begin with forward contracts forward contracts are over the counter contract in which two parties agree to do a deal or do a transaction at a future date based on the deal they are doing right now so there are two types of forward contracts one is deliverable forward in which the underlying asset is delivered from one party to other whereas the other is cash settled forward so in the example of deliverable forward was already um, explained in the los1 if you haven't uh, go we haven't to visit los1 uh, just look at uh, the cards in this video you will be able to find the link for that so the example where the businessman wanted to do a deal with the farmer and um, for uh, to buy a crop in at a future that was a deliverable forward in that example the party the businessman who wanted to buy the underlying asset was uh, called to be having a long forward position whereas the person who is selling the underlying asset was said to be have short forward position the other kind of forward contract is cash settled in which parties don't actually deliver the product to one from one to another but they give the difference of the deal price and the market price uh, to the party so that they can buy the product in the market at a price they have agreed upon for example one party is going to buy a stock from the other party at a price of ten dollar now the market price is fifteen dollar so the party which has uh, agreed to sell the price uh, the stock at ten dollar will give five dollar to the first party so that they can buy the buy the stock from market ten dollar so you can understand it they are going to buy the stock in uh, at 15 from the market but the five is paid by the other party they are actually paying ten dollar only from their pocket similarly if the price of the stock was five dollars this party would have to pay five dollars to buy the stock from the market and the rest five dollars it has to give to the party which was expected to sell the stock the forward price payoff for buying is the spot price minus the forward price whereas the payoff for selling is forward price minus the spot price so uh, forward price is basically uh, fixed which was already de uh, already fixed at the time of uh, contract initiation whereas spot price change uh, every day based on their park price in the market so in the table that the forward price is fixed 200 and spot price is changing from 70 to 130 so in each case there is a payoff so you can see that as the price is increasing uh, spot price is increasing the payoff of buyer is increasing in the graph also you can see the similar trend whereas for the selling when the spot price is increasing the payoff is decreasing so that's why you can see similar trends now we are going to study the futures contract the future is basically a 
forward contract which is traded on an exchange so now as we have said that it is traded on an exchange so it has some rules uh, related to exchange like paying the margin so we will understand uh, the all the whole margin concept from the example in the table given below so first there are some terms which we have to understand so the agreed upon price in which there will be the transaction is called the futures price every day spot price changes so that price is basically the mark to market price or daily settlement price now what happens is that the futures price is always every day matched with the daily settlement price or mark to market price and that difference is added or subtracted so for example if the futures price is more than the mark to market price then there is a loss and the, uh, that amount is subtracted from your account so what happens see in the example you can see there is something called initial margin so you are basically having a margin account with the exchange where you put some money initially the amount you pay is called the initial margin so here you have paid 10 dollars now there is another term called maintenance margin this is the amount which is the uh, something called a threshold below this if the amount goes then the this exchange asks you to pay something more to add money into the margin account otherwise they will square off the position so they initiate a margin call when they are asking you to add more money into the margin account so in this example we have uh, seen that there is an initial margin of 10 that means that they have asked you to pay 10 dollar initially in the margin account now what happens that uh, if the margin account reduced to 6 they will initiate a margin call so in the example you can see that initial future price was 120 whereas settlement price on the first day was 122 so the margin has added with 2 rupees 2 dollars as uh, 10 was the initial margin and 2 was the profit now in the next day it reduced to 118 the settlement price was 118 that means that the there is a loss of 2 dollars so margin account reduced to 8 because from 12 it is reduced to 4 dollars another day if same thing happen it the settlement price reduced to 6 116 so the margin account reduced to 6 and margin call is initiated at that time if you don't pay the money the they will square off the position okay so this is the example of how futures work in a, um, how margins work in the future one more uh, characteristic of futures is a limiting price limiting price is basically a price band which is given by the exchange under which every person has to trade so if everybody is uh, trading above the upper limit it is called a limit up if everybody is trading below the limit it is called a limit down in both the cases the trading stops until and unless a number of players starts trading in the band again and when the trading is stopped it is called locked limit the number of contracts which are outstanding at a given amount of time is called open interest so uh, these are some characteristics one of the very important characteristic of the futures is that at the end of the settlement period the spot price is converged to the futures price that means both price will become the same price now that's all what we had to study in this part one in the next part we will study about swaps carried derivatives and options so thank you very much Please like, subscribe and share this channel and also share it with as many people as you can so that many people can get advantage to it. You can also comment in this video to let us know how you feel about these videos, how we can improve it and which kind of topics you really want us to make videos on. Thank you very much.